one day, three years ago, I was skiing. This particular day was a little bit windier and a little icier than the others. This particular run of mine was a little faster and a little more daring than the others. I saw a ramp. I had been off this ramp a dozen times. I was comfortable. I let myself rush towards it. It grew larger and larger. It approached faster and faster. Then I looked to the side. The hill was a white blur, too fast. It's too fast. 50 feet away, I tried to slow down, but the ground beneath me wasn't snow anymore, it was ice. 40 feet away, my heart was pounding. 30 feet, 20 feet. I was jumping side to side, trying to stop, but nothing was working. 10 feet, five feet. The ramp hung over me like a skyscraper, and I thought about jumping out of the way. Then there was a clock. It's 4 a.m. I'm in a hospital bed, and I can no longer feel my legs. For two weeks, I was confined to that hospital bed for almost 24 hours a day. I had no feeling below my waist. I had no movement below my waist. And nobody knew how to change that. In fact, there seemed to be a silent consensus that it may not be possible to change that. But that wasn't something I was willing to accept. And it certainly wasn't a good enough reason to quit before I had even started. My fear of being stuck, unable to move, unable to walk, was not paralyzing, it was catalytic. I remember lying there hours and hours in that hospital bed, unable to move, unable to read, unable to use electronics because of my concussion. But I could try to move my legs, and try I did. To the outside world, it must have looked like I was completely oblivious to everything around me, especially to my parents. But no, my mind was racing, searching for possibility, trying to move my legs, trying with everything it had. Three weeks passed, 10 hours every single day, trying to do one thing and one thing alone. And then it worked. I got a twitch. The boy who was never supposed to get better, who was never supposed to walk, just did the impossible. The doctors found out about this and immediately things started to change. A few days later I was being sized for braces for my legs to help me stand. I was no longer being taught how to live in a wheelchair, I was being taught how to walk. Now, getting that first twitch resulted from, well, being bored out of my mind, for one, but also the employment of an approach to problem solving, which I intend to tell you about today. Using this approach, I taught myself how to play the piano. I learned Chinese, and I grew a third, grew a third hand. All right, not the last one. That was just to see if you were still listening. <laughs> Now, in an attempt not to be a walking cliche, allow me to illustrate this technique as opposed to spelling it out. So two months after the initial injury, I got these braces. They went from my feet to my waist. Now, the creation of these braces was prompted by that twitch in my thigh from earlier. However, at this point in time, I still had almost zero return of function in my legs. And on top of that, my hips were so tight from sitting in a wheelchair all day that I couldn't lie on my stomach.
as you'd expect, my first few tries were failures. But I kept trying. My physiotherapist and a physiotherapy aide lifted me to a partial standing position where I could put much of my weight through a walker. The plan was I would push into the walker with my arms and with their help straighten out my hips to a neutral alignment. The problem was though, my hips were so tight that at 20 degrees off neutral, they started to burn. At 15 degrees off neutral, I started feeling nauseous. At 10 degrees off neutral, it felt like my body was being torn apart. At five degrees off neutral, I began to see stars. And then, when I finally reached neutral, it was likely the most pain I had ever felt in my life. But I was standing. I was finally standing. That was hard. Actually, that was beyond hard. But that's the thing. If I had avoided it, if I had put it off, I may have never walked. Maybe today I would be sitting in a wheelchair instead of standing before you on the magic carpet. So hence the first part of my technique being hard work. Now, I mean, it's maybe a little unfair to use the second hardest thing I've ever done to illustrate something I try to do on the daily. Hardest thing, of course, being talking to girls. But, uh, <laughs> but I think it proves my point. <laughs> now, while I've demonstrated to myself, and I firmly believe that hard work can accomplish just about anything eventually, it's far from the most effective way to do so. So now I present to you the next part of my technique, creativity. For balance, my physiotherapist and I would often spend hour-long sessions wrestling and pushing each other around. Sometimes this would morph into us trying to see who could give the other the bigger wedgie. <coughs> I always won. Other times, uh, I would be walking, but instead of putting my weight through two canes, I would hold sticks above my head, which he held on the other end. For compensations, I would do all sorts of exercises targeting specific muscles in various different contexts of movement. And I would also revisit exercises which I already thought within my ability, adding layers and layers of complexity. One time he even threw me over his shoulder and carried me out to a puddle in the parking lot which he proceeded to dip my toes into. Um, this was, of course, to test sensation and had nothing to do with me growing increasingly rambunctious over the course of the session. <laughs> One time I had someone over who helps me train. I was walking in front of the mirror, analyzing the compensations and the problems in my gait, of which there were many. We were trying to minimize them or actually, in fact, move them, remove them. But while we made some progress, we never really seemed to fix anything. I decided to take a break and sit down. He walked back and forth in the mirror, and we compared his gait to mine. Eventually, though, we both found ourselves staring blankly at my canes beside me. He grabbed one and sort of idly put his weight through it while he thought. And then it occurred to me. Try walking with these, I said, as I handed him my other cane. And immediately he understood. He took the canes and started walking, both of us in high hopes. But we soon realized that his walking was still di very different from my own, and it hadn't given us the great epiphany we were looking for. But then I saw it. He was walking with a two-point pattern. I walked with a four-point pattern. Now. A two-point pattern of walking looks like this. Cane and foot at the same time. Cane and foot. A four-point walking pattern, however, looks like this. Cane, foot, cane.
cane foot. So I told him, walk with a four-point pattern. And immediately, ten things stopped working. I, we both saw it, and I jumped to my feet. I said, pass me the canes. I want to try this. So he did. And immediately, the ten things that stopped working for him started working for me. For the next few weeks, every time my feet hit the floor, my mind went to that two-point walking pattern. I trained it, and I practiced it until it became the new normal. Constantly thinking, constantly observing, constantly trying. I'm no longer that boy stuck in a hospital bed. And I never intend to be again. To me, hard work is like putting your head down and sprinting blindly towards your goal. Creativity is like sitting down with your head in the stars, dreaming, thinking. Both have their advantages. Both have their limitations. Creativity and hard work used simultaneously, however. It's like running towards your goal, but being able to course correct if you need to. And there's nothing that can beat that. Thank you.